Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another fun, fast laser tutorial. So let's get cracking. Friends, this is the Tinkercad workspace. This is a project I have made for you, and I have made it public. So, of course, I can tinker this, but when you click on the link in my description, or if you visit my website and find my Tinkercad HL Mod Tech profile, when you see that little project, you'll be able to copy and tinker it. If you've never used Tinkercad before, I always choose sign in with Google. Don't be worried if your colors are different in mine. That just means I've played with it since I created this tutorial. Now friends, this is for a laser cutter. It is a line that you can put in a honeycomb bed. I wanna show you also just how cool Tinkercad is when you're designing. So this will already be in your design. I'm gonna do Control D and let me break it apart and show you how it's built. So this is the ungroup button and you can see I've got this little piece here and here. Right now I'll click Control D so you can see how this moved and then I flipped it just like this to put it on the other side. Now as I look at this version, it is hanging a tiny bit underneath. So I'm gonna delete that and I'm going to shift click on both of these. So I'm just giving you a couple of quick skills so that you can see how easy Tinkercad is to work with. Now I just did a nudge to move that up. So now when I group these two pieces, that one will be a little bit better than the one below. See how this nugget was hiding underneath it. Now, one of the most amazing things about Tinkercad is that everything is naturally a solid if it's connected. You don't really have to follow all the rules that other CAD systems have. So right now, I'm going to take this and do Control-D one more time, and let me show you how I broke a rule while building this. So I'm going to switch to the color blue. Just because I'm a huge Lions fan, I'm going to make these gray. And friends, let me show you this strategy. So first, we're going to ungroup and then I'm gonna go over to this piece and I'm gonna ungroup. Friends, look at that mess. I just took a shape and used cubes to cut it. Right now I'm going to, I'm gonna hold shift and right click drag so you can see how I can pan. All I wanted was this little bend here so that it would have friction when it went in the pin. I built it with a tube. When you bring out this tube, this is what it naturally looks like. I said I wanted the wall, or this piece right here, to be 0.5 and pressed enter. I left the radius 10 and I made the side 64 so it was most smooth, and then I just squoze it until it was close to that shape. I chose to make it a little thicker, so I just put a 1 and press enter. Notice it adjusted to that exact size. I moved it into the space, squeezed a little more, squeezed a little more, did a rotation, Notice if you stay inside, it goes 22 and a half degrees at a time. I wanted to fine tune it, so I came out here and I moved it about four degrees. I'm just getting close to that so you can see how I did it. Pick a different weird color just because, and then I'm gonna squeeze it down. And I simply brought out cube holes to cut off the parts I didn't need. If you don't want a part, you can hit delete. I don't wanna group this yet, so I'm gonna lock it. I'm gonna click on the original orange one. I'm gonna hide it for a second. And you can see how this is gonna trim that shape so it fits in there. I'm gonna just nudge it a couple clicks. I like that. And then watch this. These three holes plus the purple piece. Now it shows the red piece with a purple outline. That means it's locked. When I group it, Bingo, all I've got left is that cool little part I needed. You can see here I missed by a tiny hair. Once again with that point, one millimeter nudge, I can just push that up and bingo, it's ready to group for 3D printing. I can unlock it, group the two, control G. Now right now it's weird because I've got those two odd ones, but let me show you how I would click on my final part and I would simply hit export and choose STL and then save it into my 3D modeling folder. Now I've already done that this time, so I'm just gonna hit cancel. So friends, I have reverted it back. I've left you a few notes. I do wanna remind you when you are done with a project, if you go back to the Tinkercad workspace, you can click up here on the gear, change the properties. Of course, you'll see here is my tutorial soon topic and the name of the file. I have added some tags, it's public, and I'm allowing it to be share alike. 
Usually I choose no derivatives, but this one, I'm letting you modify the project. Of course, you'll have more skills if you watch the tutorial. Finally, friends, if you make something awesome, if you type HLMT23, press enter to add that tag. I check that tag almost every day, and of course, I'll give you a reaction. When you hit save changes, the entire world will be able to see what you made in the Tinkercad gallery. Of course, you do need to shut off staff picks. And then I always like to click right here so I can see more creations at once. If you see something you think is awesome, please take a moment to click on it. And of course, give that designer a reaction. That's wicked. Friends, if this was your first introduction to Tinkercad, I do have better day one tutorials. I'll make sure there are a few of them up here in the cards. And of course, friends, it's time to send it to Kiro. I'm going to print this on my Mingda Magician X2. Once again, I click on the file. Of course, there it is, so I can bring it in. I've already got my SD card in. Let me show you my settings. I'm simply doing 0.3 layers, which is extra fast. 0.8 for the walls. 0.8 for the top bottom. 20 for the grid. I'm using Pet G, so I've got 240 and 70. Print speed of 60. I've got retraction set at 25 and no build plate adhesion. As you can see, this little guy prints in about three minutes. Of course, I'm going to save it to the disk, eject it, and let's take it to the printer. And friends, about three minutes later, plus heat up time, we have got our little bed line. Let's go give it a test. All right, friends, before we test that awesome bed pin, I told you I had this awesome bed that I was digging, and I also added those blocks of wood. Oh my gosh, friends, I totally forgot that we could adjust where the pins go in this. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that is the smarter way to raise your bed. I'm going to fix mine later, but I wanted to leave it up so you could see it first. So, friends, this is the line that we printed. It's got those little tabs, and check it out. It fits right in these grooves so you can push it down and it gives you a straight place to line up your projects. I work with these little two layer keychains and these work out perfect. I've got the height set so that it does not interfere with the laser and they've been absolutely slick. Don't forget this cool little feature. I added that little end so it's super easy to get your finger underneath it to lift it out of there. How slick is that? Friends, I do want to mention this is a generic bed. I'll make sure there is a link in the description. I also want to let you know that it comes with these little pins that hold things down. They are absolutely slick, so that's why I've only made the line. I have not made my own custom pin because I don't really need one. Friends, there you have it. Another fun, fast laser project. Of course, friends, if you enjoyed it, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.